On today's episode, Giga Texas produces its 10 millionth 4680 battery cell, Cybertruck is winter testing in New Zealand, and Tesla users discuss the benefits of HEPA filters in the face of wildfire smoke on the East Coast. On June 16th, Tesla's team at Gigafactory Texas announced that they had produced their 10 millionth 4680 battery cell, a milestone that means the facility's work to ramp up cell production is paying off. Now, that is 10 million cells produced in the time since the factory began making them earlier this year. Tesla started building the Texas 4680 production line during the second half of 2022 and didn't reportedly start production until sometime in January of this year, as far as anyone outside the company can tell at least. And while producing 10 million batteries inside about five months while upgrading equipment is an impressive ramp up, industry insiders are suggesting that the company would likely need to produce about 10 million 4680 cells per week in order to support Model Y and Cybertruck production at Giga Texas. Tesla's not planning on making their Texas facility handle all of that alone, of course. The largest amount of 4680s being made by Tesla in-house comes from their Fremont factory in California, which has a cell production rate of about 868,000 cells per week as of December 2022. The company also began upgrading their Nevada facility in February to include an expansion to that factory's battery production lines, so Giga Texas certainly isn't alone in producing Tesla's latest generation cell. On top of that, Tesla is receiving production help from partners CATL and Panasonic, and with both of those companies investing in land for new factories in North America, it's safe to say that won't be changing anytime soon. What this milestone does signal is that Giga Texas is getting to a place where it can at least partially support its own production lines. It's invaluable to have battery manufacturing close at hand in case of transportation slowdowns from partners or other facilities, especially when the Cybertruck's production is right around the corner. Tesla's highly anticipated pickup truck will be the second vehicle in their fleet to make use of the powerful 4680 battery cell, and in order to support the higher production rates of not just the Cybertruck, but also the company's popular Model Y crossover. Tesla has been committing to huge investments in their battery production chain. Back in April, Tesla's Q1 earnings meeting saw lengthy updates on the company's 4680 plans given by Tesla's senior VP of engineering, Drew Baglino. Baglino assured investors that Tesla was making good progress on their roadmap for the 4680 set out back in 2020 when the Battery Day was first unveiled at the Battery Day event. That roadmap laid out a plan all the way into 2026 and detailed the path to scaling up battery production across the company while making moves to bring higher percentages of their battery stock entirely under the company's umbrella and eventually removing the need for partners at all. That part is very far away from now, but a much closer goal broke ground on May 8th. Tesla's lithium refinery had started construction. One of the biggest bottlenecks to ramping up 4680 production was identified all the way back in 2020, lithium refining. It's an expensive, toxic, and usually distant process. Tesla has been getting their stocks of lithium from outside North America this whole time, but once their refinery in Corpus Christi, Texas is complete, they might not have to anymore. Using a special acid-free lithium refining process, Tesla plans to use their facility, the first ever lithium refinery in North America, to produce high-quality, battery-grade lithium for their nearby facilities, as well as recycle old cells and manufacturing scrap into usable material. With all of that happening in the background, Giga Texas hitting 10 million 4680 cells produced seems pretty significant. The partially complete production line achieved that volume within five months, while the factory was undergoing heavy construction and testing of the Cybertruck production line and without any material help from the under construction refinery in Corpus Christi. Imagine the numbers Giga Texas will hit once the company's whole battery ecosystem is on its feet. Our friends at Aco Power have used their expertise to develop a groundbreaking product that's set to redefine your Tesla driving experience, the Tesla Model Y and Model 3 Fridge. If you're the adventurous type embarking on long road trips or camping trips, you know the pain of maintaining the freshness of your food and drinks. Traditional coolers don't cut it, the ice melts, and you're left with hot dog flavored water on everything. This is where the Tesla fridge steps in 
no more mess and always fresh. Do you have medication that requires refrigeration? Not a problem anymore. For families with children, storing milk, formula, baby food, or snacks during car journeys just got a whole lot easier. There are so many different use cases that it's a no-brainer for all Tesla owners. Now let me share why I'm particularly excited about this Tesla fridge. The fridge can be controlled by a Bluetooth app, making it a breeze to adjust settings on the fly. Despite offering a sizable 35 liter storage, it weighs only 30 pounds, making it easy to move around with these sturdy handles. The power consumption is remarkably low and uses just 0.4% of your Tesla's battery per 24 hours. The fridge is available in two versions for the Tesla Model Y and one for the Model 3, accommodating a broad range of Tesla owners. EcoPower's rich history of creating successful eco-friendly products gives us confidence that this fridge is high quality and built to last. What's more, it's so quiet you won't even realize it's on. If you support the project quickly, you can lock in your Tesla Model Y fridge for only $349 or $299 for the Model 3 fridge. The sooner you buy, the cheaper it'll be, so don't wait too long. Consider supporting this incredible Kickstarter project by Aco Power. I've had my Model Y fridge for over a week now. It's incredibly easy to use and the quality is fantastic. This is a game-changing product for any Tesla owner that enjoys the outdoors. A prototype Tesla Cybertruck was seen being unloaded from a plane at a New Zealand airport on June 18th, and with official production so close to starting, there's really only one reason for one of Tesla's new pickups to be there, and that is winter testing. The company has of course already tested the Cybertruck at their property in Alaska, but that was last winter, and Tesla apparently needs one final round of testing on icy, snow-covered ground before committing to production. Of course, keen observers will have noted that it is summer up here in the Northern Hemisphere, and even Alaska can't escape the annual thaw. So if Tesla wants to test on some genuine snowy conditions, they need to bring their truck to the Southern Hemisphere. Tesla has reportedly used New Zealand's winter testing grounds before, so it makes sense they'd use the facilities there again. It might seem a little odd to think of the place that Peter Jackson shot Lord of the Rings as being covered in snow, but this is their winter, and being so close to the South Pole means that they get their fair share of similar winter conditions as we do up in the Global North. And the Southern Hemisphere Proving Grounds is an award-winning testing course that's been used by a bunch of automotive and tire manufacturers. More importantly, this is another sign that we are getting closer to Cybertruck's production. Sure, Tesla and its CEO Elon Musk have been saying that production of their Sharpline pickup truck would be starting sometime this summer, with an expected date for their first delivery event sometime around late August or early September. But it's always best to look at what has actually been happening in order to figure out if those dates are still correct or not. And Tesla hasn't exactly been hiding the signs that pre-production has been going very well. We've seen prototypes cruising the streets on internal tracks, casting of the frame parts, and even recently, this camo-covered version spotted in Palo Alto, California. Automakers do sometimes use camo to hide features of a pre-production vehicle, but this seems like either a response to a joke from the community, or some testing from the in-house Cybertruck peripherals team, or maybe both. We all know how Elon is like with embracing community memes. Regardless, all of this has been happening right out in the open. Tesla's not hiding anything, really, which is great news for the 1.5 million Cybertruck reservation holders who are hoping the company can keep to their August-September delivery date. So we don't really have to take Tesla and Elon at their word, we can see how close they are to starting production, and if they are flying a prototype across the world to finish up some routine winter condition testing, then they have to be pretty close. It has been a pretty wild couple of weeks if you happen to be living on the east coast of North America. Over 34 wildfires were active in the Canadian provinces of Quebec and Ontario at the beginning of June and flooded southwards causing some pretty intense conditions, especially if you already have weak lungs. These conditions sparked several discussions on air quality and the need to combat climate change, but Tesla owners also started discussing the use of the HEPA filters that come standard with some of the company's vehicles, notably the models Y, S, and X. These models have an activatable bioweapon defense mode that uses a large HEPA filter to clean the air of up to 99.9% .9 of fine particulate matter and other pollutants. 
something that was desperately needed by folks living under that cloud of forest fire smoke. And it's not the first time Tesla's HEPA filters rescued some customers. Back in 2019, California was swept by a similar rash of wildfires, and users there reported that the bioweapon defense mode saved them a good deal of respiratory distress during that time. But now that these fire seasons are becoming more common, some Tesla users are wondering when the Model 3 will be seeing this feature as well. In a post on Twitter, Tesla owner at Nate Wiki laments the lack of a HEPA filter on his Model 3 as a trio of coordinated gas vehicle drivers allegedly decided to blow a bunch of exhaust his way. This incident wasn't as dangerous as smoke, but it does highlight a lack of protection in the Model 3. But maybe not for much longer. Originally, the bioweapon defense mode was only available on the Model X and then later added to the other two models. We have been seeing a constant string of improvements to the Model 3 in that time, including a much larger design upgrade called Project Highland that is still yet to be fully revealed, so it's possible Tesla could have already solved this issue. But more than that, strong filters in personal vehicles may become a necessity soon, as in a lot of areas, Tesla is ahead of the automotive industry on this one, but not for their entire fleet. Let's hope those Model 3s get a HEPA filter soon. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.